Hello and welcome back to Maker's Muse. My name is Angus and in this video we'll be reviewing the Iron Scan S by Shining 3D, a desktop 3D scanner. I'm super excited for this one. So the Iron Scan S was successfully crowdfunded in January this year by Chinese-based company Shining 3D. What's interesting though is this isn't Shining 3D's first foray into 3D scanning. In fact, they have heaps of high-end 3D scanning solutions from dental scanning rigs to photogrammetry and even reverse engineering stuff, which is really cool. So I was super psyched when Shining 3D reached out to me and asked me to do a review on their Ironscan S desktop 3D scanner. So onto the unboxing. Well, firstly, the box. Yes, I am an industrial designer, so I really appreciate when effort goes into packaging. And this box looks absolutely fantastic, I must say. So when you're spending this much money on any high-end technology product, it really does make a difference, so top marks for that Shining 3D. Inside the box, you're greeted with the biggest Ziploc bag I've ever seen and all your scanner components neatly arranged in expanded polystyrene for safe transport. In the kit that Shining 3D sent me, you get the scanning unit as well as a turntable. Both feel very well built and look quite good. You also get the stand for the scanner as well as the calibration block. You also get heaps of cables. Each unit needs one USB, one power, and the scanner also needs a VGA cable, so that's a lot of cables to manage. The quick start guide is really easy to follow, and I really appreciate that. And all you need to do to get it up and running is to assemble the stand for the scanner. This is pretty easy to do, although I didn't notice that the screw was very tight, so I had to take it apart and force a new thread through uh, all the way into the plastic part. And once I did that, it went together with no issues. And then you just attach the stand to the base of the scanner with two screws. So alignment is everything with 3D scanning. So luckily Shining 3D give you a very handy alignment guide. So you need to line up your scanner and your turntable precisely along those black lines to get a good accurate scan. But we're not there yet, we need to plug all those wires in. So like I said, there's one USB per unit and one power per unit as well as the VGA cable. Something I did find quite funny is the VGA cable that the scanner comes with is hilariously overkill. It is huge, it's really, really heavy, to the point where it actually weighs down one side of the scanner and makes it unstable. So I decided to just swap that out for a much lighter VGA cable, and it solved that problem. So something to keep in mind, if you have a VGA cable lying around that's lighter, you might want to just swap to that. Although initially I was looking at using my Surface Pro to do the scanning, I decided to use a much beefier computer, because these files can export at around half a gig in size. So I went to the kitchen and started using my workstation. The calibration sequence is pretty easy and very important with any 3D scanner, especially a turntable based one. So you set the calibration block onto the turntable and just rotate it around the different orientations. Pretty straightforward, very much automatic, but it does take some time and you should do this before any scan if you're looking to get the best possible quality. Yes, even if you do multiple scans without moving things, things do move slightly and you will over time start to lose that calibration. So taking a closer look in the Shiny 3D software for the Ironscan S, we need to describe what we're scanning first. So you have different color ranges, so from light to medium to dark, and then a mix of bright and dark, which would be the sort of the worst case scenario for this 3D scanner. It's usually best to cover your shape in a really even coat of talcum powder or something that's a uniform medium color. Otherwise, the scanner can struggle to see things. For example, you're not going to be able to scan anything that's shiny or clear. It just won't see it. And then you also have different qualities of exports. So high quality capture, medium or low quality uh, polygon count. So I'm going to choose medium for this print because it's gray. I'm also going to choose high detail. Then I'm going to hit scan. The IronScan S uses a technology called Structured Light, which projects a series of patterns onto an object and reads back the distortions via two cameras. It then uses clever mathematical tricks to work out the 3D contours. One of the really neat things about this setup is it actually lets you see the scans in real time as it completes them, so you can see how the scan's going, if there's anything wrong with it, and actually just view the detail as it's progressing, which is really cool and a bit similar to the Matter and Form scanner. The CPU load that the scanner had on the computer was fairly reasonable, not too high. However, when you go to mesh your object at the end, that's when things heat up. And so you need a fairly decent rig to use this scanner and get any sort of decent output out of it because these scans, once they're completed, can easily be 500 megabytes or larger in size, which is pretty substantial for a 3D mesh. Once the scan has been completed and meshed, you have the option to complete the scan and export, or you could even continue by rotating the shape onto the turntable and scanning from a different orientation. So you can actually take multiple scans and get more and more definition each time. And here's what the final scan looks like after three passes on the IronScan S. And this is what I mean about needing a powerful computer. This is running on a Core i7 with 8 gigs of RAM. 
and it's actually only managing two frames per second in Mesh Lab. Some of you will note as well that it hasn't meshed correctly right inside the mouth. Had this is fair enough, light can't go around corners, so inside the mouth is a big open cavity that that scanner could not get into, despite how many orientations I moved it into. So you'd have to open this up in something like Mesh Mixer and manually repair it. This is the case of lots of 3D scans. No scan is perfect straight off the scanner. I also gave manual scan a go and it does work pretty well, but it's definitely not as easy to use as the turntable. Though having said that, the manual alignment using the three dots on the 3D space is actually pretty good and it's a lot more accurate than other systems I've used like the next engine, it's, you have to get the next engine dots really, really pinpoint to get a decent alignment. Whereas with Shiny 3D software, it seems to be a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more clever in that regard. And if this scan, for example, I took two shots and they were really, there wasn't much data to go on, but it still aligned those two shots perfectly, which is really impressive to see. And of course, this review would not be complete without the test scan of Vanellope von Schweetz. And this just says it all. Comparing the scan from the Einscan S to the matter and form 3D scanner. The difference is phenomenal. For example, you've got the little candy bits in her hair, they come out clearly on the Einscan S, whereas the matter form, they just look like little weird blobs. And this is all just because of the mesh data. It's so much higher in the Einscan S than off the matter and form. There is so many more triangles and so much more detail captured off this scanner. And it takes way less time. It took, you know, something like five minutes to capture this scan whereas the matter and form took over an hour. Again, it's worth mentioning that this is a pretty bad case scenario for 3D scanning. Usually the shape should be a uniform color, and that's why the, the pupils in the eye look a little bit strange. It's because they were black, and the scanner really does not like scanning black. So that's the Iron Scan S by Shining 3D. I am absolutely blown away by this 3D scanner. I have used so many other scanning solutions in the past, like the matter and form, which you saw in the previous review, or the David SLS systems, but this is by far the best resolution I've ever seen out of a scanner that's pretty much automatic. You just press scan and you walk away. Although I must say that is possibly one of the downfalls of this system. It's very easy to use, but that's pretty much it. You can't go into the finer details and export, for example, a non-solidified mesh. Not many people want to do this, but if you want to capture some details and not wrap it completely and make it a solid, you can't do that yet in their software. Likewise, any sort of manipulation, they actually have a video where they show a terracotta warrior getting a head replaced and put on. You can't actually do that in the software they provide with it, which is a bit of a shame. It's a very new product and I'm sure they're gonna uh, you know, open new features in the, in the future. But for now, it's very much an automatic solution. And yeah, it does that extremely well. So if you are trying to get your feet wet into 3D scanning, you've got your first 3D printer and you wanna like look at 3D scanning, I would highly recommend this unit. You are not gonna be disappointed. You do, however, need a pretty powerful computer. As I found the... Um, Little Surface tablet just couldn't cut it, unfortunately. So I had to end up using, having to use my uh, my workstation. But anything with a decent Core i5 or quad core and a graphics card should uh, should do you fine. So thanks for watching, guys. I really enjoyed doing this review, and you're going to be seeing this 3D scanner in many of my future videos because now I can do awesome stuff like reverse engineering or sort of freehand modeling and then scanning into the system, all sorts of crazy stuff. So thanks again for Shining 3D for sending me the scanner. I have absolutely loved using it. I'm going to be using it lots more in the future. And if you enjoyed this video, please do feel free to subscribe to Maker's Muse. I do all kinds of 3D printing, now 3D scanning and 3D digital manipulation videos. And I'd love to have you subscribe. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again soon here on Maker's Muse. Bye.